Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. Today we're going to be painting one of my favorite subjects, the snowman. Uh, I have a very large collection of those. I've been painting them for, oh, going on uh, 30 years now maybe. So I have painted a few in my day and I still love them. Super fun. We're going to um, try to make this as beginner friendly as we can today. I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's in the chat today, so if you've got questions while I'm painting these, you can ask it and in the chat there, and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, we are going to be using a 12 inch canvas today. I've painted it with a very light coat of quinacridone burnt orange. If you don't have this color, you could use uh, another orange, really any kind of orangey color. Um, burnt sienna would work as well. Yellow oxide would work. I just wanted a kind of neutral warm color um, for the background. So it doesn't matter exactly. We're going to be painting over it. So um, I'll go over the colors here with you got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna. There's the quinacridone burnt orange. Um, that is a discontinued color, so if you don't have that one, you can substitute burnt sienna with a little bit of quinacridone magenta instead. That'll make uh, a similar color. Um, Indian yellow hue or cadmium yellow light would work as well. This is a little bit warmer, so if you don't have this Indian yellow hue color, just pick out a yellow that's got a little bit of an orange tone to it or a little bit golden tone to it. It. Um, this one is uh, Thalo Turquoise, Ultramarine Blue, Quinacridone Magenta, and Cadmium Orange. And then this is Unbleached Titanium, Titanium White. I put out a pretty good amount of it. Little dollop of Zinc White. That is a transparent white. If you don't have that, again, you can use Titanium White with a little bit of, of uh, water or some Glazing Medium, which I have down here. Or Matte Medium would work as well instead of the Glazing Medium. Alrighty, I don't want people to get caught up on having to have the exact same colors as I'm using. Um, the Thalo Turquoise is a turquoise color, obviously, but if you don't have that, you could use like a Thalo Blue that's got a little bit more of a green shade and just to add some yellow to it. So um, that would work as well. I'm just going to want, I'm going to do kind of a limited palette today. Um, I'm going to use uh, green and like a sage green and red as my main colors and really kind of burnt red um, instead of like a bright fuchsia red. Although fuchsia is the color of the Pantone color of the year for next year. So now I'm going to have to find a project to do. Can I see the... Thank you. All right. <laughs> I'm going to start out with a two inch aspen, um, just a large flat brush will do. We'll paint in this background. Um, I wanted to keep the, the colors very neutral. Um, let me fix that um, reference photo so you can see the whole thing. Hold on. Your help didn't do a very good job. No. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm not even going to pretend like you did do a good job. <laughs> Just not even going to, not going to like be like, oh no, it was okay. No. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> brutal, brutal true. Yeah. Yeah. Mark's like, I'll see you. <laughs> All right. So, um, I think for uh, the main body of the snowman, you're going to want some sort of a, I guess I didn't grab one large stippler brush um, so this one's probably going to be a little bit too big but I'll probably use it for some of the snow or something um, this one is a gesso brush uh, Princeton I don't know the numbers here they've rubbed off but um, they've only got one kind of this gesso brush here um, that I've found um, and then this is a uh, Deerfoot stippler so that would work I've got a couple different sizes of that um, but just something that gives our snow a little bit of a fluffiness um, and then for the details on the actual snowman and things I'm probably going to use a um, blender this is a willows blender 3 8 inch i've got a two round kind of a medium to smallish round and um i'm gonna get a 
angle brushes here, quarter inch and three eighths inch angle brushes. I, I don't know. Again, I'm going to just use a variety of different size brushes and I will mention them more as I use them um, so we can get going here. But um, I like to have a lot of different brushes, but you don't have to have all the brushes that I'm using. Just use what you've got that's similar enough that kind of gets you the sim similar techniques. There's only a few things where you absolutely have to have the same type of brush um, as I'm using, and that's usually like the stippling type of thing. You need kind of a stiffer bristle brush, but the rest of them you can kind of get by with whatever you've got that's similar. All right. Let's get going here. So um, for, for starters, I'm just going to do the background with kind of a neutral sort of tree-ish like um, background. I'm not going to really worry about it looking like exactly like trees, but I do want it to be kind of generally um, forest looking sort of. So I'm probably going to put in some... Um, some kind of limbs going vertical here. Now, because I've got this orange in the background, if I use a blue on top of it, it'll kind of neutralize that blue because um, they're opposite on the color wheel. So I'm going to go a little bit more blue with this gray that I was using so that it grays it out this background orange here. And so I've mixed my burnt sienna and my ultramarine blue with just a little bit more of the ultramarine mixed in. And then I'm going to mix in this color. Ooh, that's going to make a nice, nice color for me. It's white. And I'm not going to over mix it. So I'm going to leave it kind of streaky here and we'll see what that does. That may be a little bit dark for me, but we'll see. I'm not, again, not over blending it. And I'm going to come down to past where I think I need the coverage to be. Add a little bit of water. You can see that paint kind of got up high on my brush there. So if I wiggle it, I can kind of push it down a little bit more. Okay, just keep going. If you get weird streaks or weird colors, that's okay. We can, we'll fix it later. Doesn't have to be, look good at this point. We're just trying to get some coverage on here. And if you want to go a little bit lighter and let a little bit more of that orange show through, you can do that too. This is kind of going on a little bit heavier than I necessarily intended for it to. And that just means my paint's probably a little bit thick. So I'm going to just add a little bit more water to it to give it a little bit more fluidity so that it can go on a little smoother and a little bit more transparent. Looks like this isn't your first time streaking. If you want to. <laughs> if you want to, no. <laughs> <laughs> and now I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> oh well. All right. There we go. Gonna get some black, black or um, more of this ultramarine blue and burnt umber color. And this time I'm gonna kinda of go side to side with it, just kind of fill in this bottom area here with it. Tap in. be like at this point going why did I even put that orange on there but actually does help us it gives us a better idea of how dark our gray is to begin with and it also is is kind of showing through even though it looks like we've covered it all up we really haven't it's still there it does influence the upper colors so and that's what we wanted and I think this color is pretty pretty close to what I wanted. I think I might want a little bit more of the, ooh, I got a little bit of burnt sienna there. That's okay though. Let's go ahead and go with that. And I'll 
will remain blue. Why not? Really, any of the browns work really well with ultramarine blue to make a gray. It's one of my favorite color combos because you can make it more cool by adding more blue. You can make it more warm by adding more of the browns. So it's really easy to alter the tone of the color, the undertone of the color. Okay, that looks really good. All right, so we've got some streaking there. And then let's go ahead and put in some little trees of some sort. So I'm gonna grab my angle brush for that. This is this number six angle. And I can already tell you this is gonna bother me, so I'm putting some tape on it because it is splitting. Just need to get a new one, but for today, we'll just tape it. <laughs> if you if you got splitting like that, the best way to stop it from progressing is just to tape it. Get some good, cute masking tape and tape it down, and then you're good to go. It'll okay. it'll extend the brush light quite a bit, actually. And it because the water can't get up in that wood. It it'll, it'll you know the every time you put it in water, it'll get up in there and crack it some more. So that'll just kind of stop it from happening. And it only works with cute masking tape. Just right. the regular old yellow stuff will not do it. No, 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 no. Okay. Don't do that to yourself. What? Life's too short for ugly masking tape. You gotta. Okay, so I want to go like one shade, maybe two shades lighter, but I don't want to be as, you know, super, super light because we've got a lot of, um, a lot of ways to go with our snowmen. We want to leave room for our snowmen to be white, uh, you know, light colored. So we're going to get some glaze here and I'm going to start down lower than I think I need to and just start doing some wiggly lines here, making sure that I'm kind of just making sure that they get wider as they go down. So And I'd say let's mark out where our snow bank is going to be. So our snow is going to, well, that doesn't want to mark, does it? Yeah, we can just do it with a brush. So our snowman's going to sit right in here. Let's go ahead and kind of just sketch him in. So he's going to be in here. up to about here. His hat's going to come up here. So right about to there. Right in here somewhere be the top of his head. And so there's the sides of his face and the body. Okay. So now we'll kind of have an idea of where to place our trees. And then the snowbank is going to come up around him here, so kind of in here somewhere. So I want my trees to come down below that point so that there's no trees kind of hiding back in the background. That makes sense. And we'll probably bring the snowbank up higher than that, but at least we'll have these trees kind of in the right place for for later. And I'm putting in some little side branches here. And this is actually kind of lifting off the blue or the gray that I did because it wasn't fully dry before I did these limbs and so it's it's actually making them look kind of orange which I don't I don't hate so I go with it but if you want to make sure that these stay kind of whiter whiter you can make sure you wait till the 
gray is completely dry before you do this step. So you ready for a snowman fact? What? <clears throat> Are you ready for a snowman fact? Sure. So one of the earliest photographs that exists contains a snowman in it. Really? Mm hmm Interesting. Not the first photograph, but it's from 1845. Wow. That's interesting. I thought so. Yeah. The earliest record that can be found mentioning a snowman is from 1380. Wow. So they've been around for a while. Yeah. That's neat. Okay, there we go. So we're just kind of doing some ghost, ghost trees back there. Nothing really fancy and also keeping it fairly dark as far as our values go we're staying in this darker ish range here um, kind of mid mid dark range for that background and that way we've got all this room here to work with our snowman he's going to be nice and bright in front of it if we went too bright in the background our snowman wouldn't have any contrast to work with so kind of like me in the background of you what? If I was too bright, you wouldn't have any contrast <laughs> to work with. You wouldn't stand out so much. <laughs> Is that why you do it? <laughs> of course. You only pretend like you're not bright. You just like people to think that. It gives you an edge. I did give our son two strategy. advent calendars instead of keeping one for myself. So. All right. Case in point. True. So there's true that. True that. True. <laughs> true. <laughs> Fact. Mark bought himself and all the boys every year. We buy, well, this last couple of years. The last couple of years, we buy these Lego advent calendars that have the Star Wars figurines and so they can do them and kind of talk about, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Gives us something to do, you know, from, do. A, from far, but do right. it together. Exactly. So, anyhow, I got this, the ones this year pretty early. Yep. And our son Nathan came to visit, and he gave him his this for this year. And then we went and visited him for Thanksgiving, and he gave him Another ours. One. Yep. <laughs> well, I gave Jordan his when they visited. I was like, okay. And the second one was out, and uh -huh. I was like, oh yeah, I got to give that to Nathan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you forgot that you'd already done yeah, it, so. and then Nathan didn't obviously didn't remember that you'd given it to him either, because. Yeah. He didn't say anything about it. So. Well, he was like, he, he thought that he already had, but he didn't say anything. And it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. yep. He has too much respect for his dad. Now he's learning he's his dad isn't to, so bright. He's trying not to make, embarrass you. So. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get a little bit of, of that gray that we were using, the burnt umber and burnt um burnt umber and quinac and ultramarine blue wow i cannot say my words um and then a little bit of this gray that we were doing before here just to lighten it but i want it to be a little bit darker this time and so this is where i'm gonna go ahead and kind of map in my snowman where i want him to go and again if you want them to be a little bit more bright colors, you can go with brighter colors. I decided to go go with kind of more neutrals this time. This canvas is just sucking the moisture out of my paint as soon as I touch it. Hey, the uh, the little cards that you showed for showing the contrast and stuff. Did you get those at Blick? No, I got no. those on my, they're in my Amazon shop. Okay. So link down below. Yeah. And it comes with a, a little viewfinder to help you map out your grid. If you're drawing, kind of hold it up against your drawing from a distance and then kind of look at, get, look at your, um, oh, okay. Very cool. Thing. So you can kind of get your perspective right. And then, yeah, it has just a very basic color wheel and then the, 
grayscale finder and it's got a lanyard too that it comes with but that has a ruler but I took the lanyard off uh, so I have it hooked on the side here where I can get to it all right so there we go let's go ahead and kind of start to fill in back here around just kind of very very basic you're you're gonna get to this point in your snowman and pretty much feel like you're not doing it right which is totally normal it's just a, a ugly stage I call it so every painting kind of has one this one's one is right about here it's probably gonna get uglier before it gets better so just know that going in and see when it's like lifting like this it just means my under layers are not dry so I'm gonna have to take have this give this to Mark and let him take this and dry it because it's pulling up all all the way down to that orange here when I'm putting on new color so that means my gray from back here is not fully dry either so it's it's just lifting and if I keep trying to put more paint on it's just going to keep doing that to me until that background layer is completely dry so I okay. need to have Mark take it and dry it for me and somebody wants to know because uh, you mentioned that the canvas is sucking the moisture out uh -huh. so how do you keep that from happening okay well when he gets back with it what I'll probably do is um, is spray the back of the canvas. It's a since it's not a canvas board. It's a um, you know it's actually open backed canvas. Um, it'll let me do that. And if I spray the back of it, it'll evaporate up through and help keep the paints wetter longer. I can also add more water to my paint. Um, my studio is just really dry today, so I could have had a humidifier going. That would have helped. Um, it's just really dry in here today, and that's contributing to it as well. And also the canvas that I'm using is a little bit on the um, textured side. And I find that those are tend to be like a little thirstier. They they kind of soak up the moisture a little bit more um, quickly. So if you have a smoother canvas, um, you could try using gesso ahead of time to smooth out your canvas. Usually if I get one or two layers of paint down, it kind of seals it up a little bit and it doesn't pull the moisture as much. But um, but because I was having those trouble with that background layer not drying completely. Also, my, my orange went on about, you know, a half an hour before we started. So I could have put my orange layer on a little bit earlier. That would have um, given it some time to cure. And anytime you have like six or seven, you know, when you're like layering a lot on a canvas, um, it starts to get uh, get that way, you know, gets, it gets a little tacky, maybe not like pulling the moisture out, but it does start to do weird things for you, um, with acrylics. So, um, if you get to the point, like I'll, I'll show you what we were working on, um, in my $10 level Patreon group, I've got the, these exclusive videos that I do on Thursdays for my Patreon folks. And, uh, we decided to add a tree over here. We had like a little bit of a tree and we're going to have a woodpecker and a squirrel over here and they're all going to have ornaments and this is going to have some ornaments on it. Um, anyhow, we're, uh, we just, I decided to add a, oh, there you go. That's where you can sign up for it. If you're interested, we still have at least two more weeks to finish this. Um, but I went ahead and painted my squirrel, uh, was drawn in right here and it was very, um, it was very dark and I couldn't get it off. So I had to paint over it with this blue and then I painted this brown and then I painted more paint over the top of that. Mm -hmm. So I had like three or four layers of paint going on in this area. And then I just was like, I have to stop because at some point that paint has to cure and it really takes about 24 hours um, for acrylics to cure fully. They will be dry to the touch, but they won't be like fully 
cured and ready to continue to paint on. Um, I've just found it's easier just to let the let the acrylic set. So if I've got a project like that, that's why I really like those um, the the Thursday videos because we only work for an hour and a half, two hours max, and then we let the painting set and we come back to it. Because um, if you're working on a painting for five or six hours, sometimes if you're working on the same area for a little long time, it it can get a little bit um, testy the way it accepts paint. All right, so let's go ahead and draw in where his hat's going to go. I'm just using green chalk because I can't find my white over there. So I've got the width of the head here. I'm going to come out with the band. So come about almost to the crease here with the band and then Something like that. I'm kind of having it kind of tilt that way a little bit. And then I want a big old poinsettia here. So I'm just going to kind of mark that. And then the hat band is going to kind of come across there. And then we'll have our scarf coming out right here. And I need to move, leave room for his face. So I want his nose to come up here. Couple eyes, big smile. Oop. You can really change the personality of the snowman depending on how you do the smile, you know. Um, so you can experiment with that if you want. See what, what looks good to you. But that looks pretty good there. And then we'll have the wrap around. So this would come up underneath and over like that and then this one would be wrapped up underneath and coming out I'm just gonna kind of have it coming out this way let's have it come out even more there we go okay something like that oops And then some buttons. Go make some nice big buttons here. And then our arms. Arms out here. And this one's gonna have a nest in it. That'd be fun to have a little nest. I've done one like this before, but then I realized I hadn't done it on YouTube. I did it. I had I did a whole series of a snowman. Um, for the gallery that um, when I had my artwork in a gallery local or uh, in Little Rock and um, I don't have time for it anymore. <laughs> I don't do it anymore. <laughs> Not that I don't have the paintings that I just don't I don't want to mess with it. Oh shoot. Um, so anyhow that's a whole other story. Um, so you have to get 40% to, you know, 40 or 50% of your earnings. And then I just felt like I didn't need to do that anymore. Sell, sell them directly if I want to sell them. But um, anyhow, okay, so that'll work there. But yeah, I had, um, that's a long story to say, I had, I used to have a set, a series of snowman that I would do every year at Christmas time and one of them had a nest and we're doing it here now nice. yeah all right let me get some black I'm using this angle brush again it's working pretty good and let's go ahead and put in his hat How's chat doing? They are chatting, chatting. pretty, pretty well. Yeah. 
Very cordial, very nice group of people. Oh, yeah, for sure. We've already kicked out all the mean people a long time ago. What are you doing right now? I'm spraying the back of the canvas. That's one of the things that I had said that we could do oh. to help with the evaporation of the, or the, you know, the paint drying out too quickly. All right. Oh, I didn't leave room for my hat band. Oh, well. Amateur. I can fit it in there. What did you say? What? I heard you whispering over there. I said... <laughs> look at her. Uh-huh. She's so beautiful. Right. I, I, that's what I thought I heard. more square if you want it more square it's up to you I'm just kind of making his a little bit more kind of rounded softer looking on just make sure that you're kind of smoothing out any like lumps that you see because if you've got any like especially with heavy body acrylics if you leave those little lumpy bits in there it'll dry that way and then you'll see them when they when you, your paintings dry so I like a smoother smoother finish to the painting so I want to smooth those out a little bit and make sure any of those thickened areas, especially kind of happens along the edge sometimes. Just kind of light, light, very lightly brush them out. Okay, that looks good. I might bring that hat brim out just a little bit more over here. <coughs> I want it to look like it's rounded. snowman itself so really like the color that we've got going on here because it's like blue gray orange kind of all those colors are sort of showing up back there it's really nice looking so I'm gonna get some of that gray maybe get a little bit more like blue color here to my snow a little bit of water. I'm using this stippler brush here. This is the gesso brush. These are very economical. In it. Yeah, that looks good. Um, I think I want it a little bit darker, so I'm going to go a little bit more burnt or uh, burnt umber in there. A little bit more of the ultraman blue. And have a couple of those colors on there. The only bad thing about these brushes is that they do lose hairs pretty quickly, so they do tend to um, shed hairs, so you just have to kind of watch that. started drawing my cardinal but then I realized I didn't really want to draw them yet because I was going to do this over this area so so in chat somebody was asking about different types of Christmas paintings and mm -hmm. 
this week you posted on your uh, uh, TikTok mm-hmm. a video showing all or a lot of the Christmas paintings that you've done, snowmen and Santas and wreaths and poinsettias and yeah, I only it only had four paintings, but yeah, okay. Um, the the one you're thinking of is the one on Instagram probably that posted it was a grid. Oh. It's the grid. It's got all the different ones. It's got my favorite ones. That's not all of them. There's, there's enough. And on your YouTube channel, you have a playlist, right, for all your Christmas. Stuff? I do. Yeah, I have a Christmas playlist. That's so, got. So after the show, you can. You can just click grab over. that link and post it in the chat. You say that. Okay. It's difficult to do on my iPad. Mm, okay. I'll jump over onto the computer. That's a blast from the past right there. Yep, from there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. All right, so going back over now with a little bit more white there, leaving that kind of darker stuff sort of in the background-ish. Looks good. I want it to go up about, not quite halfway up the body there, so bring that up just a little bit more. And go a little bit darker with it back there. good <clears throat> get a little bit more of that white you can see part of the problem is just that my paints are drying out too because they're not cooperating with me very well today I'm going to get a little bit of that burnt sienna a little bit of of Indian yellow hue. I don't want like white snow, but I want it to be kind of neutral. So that burnt umber with the blue and the burnt sienna here, that'll kind of help make it a little bit more of a grayed out color. I need more of the dark though. You could use yellow oxide here. That would be a similar color. I might even grab some black here. Really grayed out. There we go. I've already got this dark gray, really dark gray. So what I'm doing with this color is just kind of taking it up one notch from that dark, dark gray. Maybe one or two notches. This is a lot lighter. Just tapping over it. Now this middle part here is going to be much lighter. I'm going to have my light coming from this direction here, so this side of him is going to be a lot lighter. So you can see I'm kind of doing the bluish tones down here and then on my snowman guy I'm gonna do a little bit warmer yellowish tone slightly and if you get it over your hat don't worry about it we'll cover that up later this brush is almost too big it's just right on the borderline of what I'd want any bigger and it'd be too much, but it's doing okay. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Getting that white. And I'm gonna hit this area and the middle and 
do my brightest color in here and then as the color is gone from my brush then pull it into this other area and this paint is still wet over here so it's gonna blend it out a little bit see how it just kind of gradually blended in there cute And by leaving a little bit of that dark around the outside edges, it kind of just gives him a little bit of roundness here. I think I want to bring him out a little bit more over here, but I, I'm not going to do it with this brush because it's just a little bit too big for it. It's, it's not giving me any precise control, so I want to, I'm going to use the Deerfoot Stippler. A 5 8 inch will be plenty big. And I'm going to get some of my dark gray. And then get a little bit of this color that I was just using and add it to that blue so I go a little bit darker here. And bring that out just a little bit. Just along that edge. And then I'm going to come up underneath where my scarf is going to be and kind of darken that area too and kind of above the scarf too. And right up along the hat band here. I can kind of just gumble it and scuff it on there. Make sure that your paint is, is dry. My paint is still a little bit tacky, so it probably needs to let it dry again kind of at some point won't accept any more paint until it's dried so widening out just the base there and making sure it's nice and dark what that will do is round out our snowman if I have my light color right up against this light color here it's going to flatten him out but by Having this dark here, this light up here, and then gradually going darker, what it does is just visually pushes that pushes that bottom area back and gives them a nice rounded area here to sit. And then I'm going to get some really dark and use the very tip and just go right along the very bottom with some really dark. Now, we can fix this later if we decide that it's way too dark but we'll just go ahead and start there and again start where you want it the darkest and then kind of gradually push it out this is our light side so I'm not going to do it on this side I'm thinking my light is coming here I'm going to have a little bit of a shadow on this side so that's why I'm going darker here I'm just bringing it out just a little bit and again, I can kind of use this brush to sort of scuff it out. I'm going to get a little bit of my white and just feather out that edge there. I didn't clean out my brush, so it was, you know, kind of mixing, gently mixing with that darker color. There we go. All right. I like the colors that we've got going on here. These really nice neutrals. It's working for me. I really like it. We've got a really interesting glow going on back in the background. I feel like I could probably have gone a little bit darker with the background, but I think I think it's going to work as is, so I don't think I'm going to alter it at all. Um, let me check that and see if that's dry. If it is, I'm going to go ahead and wipe off my chalk just water this is just regular school chalk nothing fancy you could use watercolor pencils or I just find that drawing on the canvas itself I have I have a better 
time of it if I just use a soft chalk rather than a pencil because pencil will tend to kind of scrape the paint off. All right. Might move his arm down just a little bit. Put the nest kind of under his chin area, not so high. But I'm gonna mark off those arms and fix those later. Okay, so we've got good, good coverage here. Let me get a, I'm gonna get this brush. This is the four filbert here. And I'm gonna get my black. And I'm just gonna touch up, now that I've got my dark right up under here, I'm gonna go ahead and touch up that hat. The hat will be over the top of that. Edge of the face. Here we go. And then let's go ahead and give the hat some shading. So let's grab some of this white that we have here. Get a little bit of water. I'm gonna wipe my brush so I have very little on here. And we're gonna dry brush on our texture. So I'm gonna go almost to the edge, but not quite. And just pull it very lightly. And we're just gonna kinda of scuff it up. Now, if we want to make it look like it's round in the middle here, can kind of bring the highlight down a little bit in the middle, just kind of scrubbing back and forth. And then I'm going to go across the top there. Like that. And then if I want it a little bit brighter in here, I'm going to get a little bit more white, wipe it off, and just kind of very lightly. I'm not barely pressing down here. Just scuffing a little color on there. I'm going to turn it. By turning it, it gives me an easier flow to my hand. <clears throat> well, I kind of have limited hand movement this way. Um, I can do it, but <clears throat> just find that it's a little bit easier if I have an angle. So I'm going to start here. Do the same thing. Going to go almost to the edge, but not quite. So one of the mysteries has been solved. What? <clears throat> and Carolyn Osman sent us oh. the garden gnome. Yay. Thank you, Carolyn. He's outside enjoying his sun. He's he's soaking up some rays. Mm -hmm. I'm curious where his light's going to come from. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. Very sweet. We got a really cute garden gnome from Carolyn this week. Yesterday, actually, I picked it up. Yeah. And then we got this also. Did Carolyn send that? Uh, she did not say that. That one was from Bobble Bar? Bobble Bar. But it didn't have any um, person. Any person sent it. It is amazing. So pretty. Look at that. I love it. It's probably going to hang in my studio all year long, even though it's not <laughs> Christmas, because it's too pretty to put away. <laughs> ah, that mystery has now been solved. Who is that? From Beth. Oh, From thank Mon. you, Beth. Yeah, thank you, Beth. Love it. She knows. So she sent me the shirt and sticker. Ah, and I got that. Yes, I like it. And you got the ornament. I like it. I'll trade you. <laughs> no? Okay. No. I'll keep it my shirt. To, yes. All right, so there we go. We got a little... Thing. I'm going to get a little bit more just white, wipe my brush off and do it right here. There we go. Cute. Cute. Love it. Sorry. Somebody was like, you say cute too much in my last in the gnome video. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. We They're like, we not, understand he's cute. We do not need that negativity here. Exactly. Just take that somewhere else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure if their significant other was 
saying cute to them, they wouldn't get tired of it. Exactly. Exactly. Stop saying I'm cute. Well, or they are like, you know, I already told you you were cute yesterday. You don't need to hear it again. I told you like six years ago. Oh, just, right. Just, just get over it. Get over it. Here. We already know you're cute, so. <laughs> oh, well. I, I kind of knew it. I was trying to hold back, but it, I couldn't help it. He was he was pretty adorable. I was thinking that this project would make a really cute companion so you could have him on the other side of the tree if you wanted to do it in a long mm -hmm. form. You could have the gnome on one side and the tree in the middle and then this guy on the other side. Oh, nice. Of course, the background's different, you know, so you'd obviously have the bluer background, but the, col the rest of the colors, you could use the same... Um, you know. Well, that's cute. I think it'd be cute. Yeah, that's cute that you think it's cute. <laughs> Arr. Challenge accepted. <laughs> they don't know how many times they can hear cute in an hour. <laughs> They're going to find out. Because <laughs> I can be cute. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> oh, don't, don't poke the bear. It's just passive aggressive enough to take on that challenge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so very light touches here as I'm going around over the top of the darker area and then kind of right here in the middle where I want it brighter. I'm really pressing down pretty hard. And a little bit more along that edge there. This is where he's really going to pop forward for us. And then right in the middle, along this edge here. Of course, my, snow, my scarf is going to go in here somewhere, so I'm not sure. But I can put my shadow back in if I need to. Okay, so I have very, very, very little paint on here. You can see, if you look at it, you really can't see where the paint is, maybe a little bit along this edge, but that's how much paint you want for this because otherwise you're just going to get a big glob um, going down. You want it to be super fuzzy and light, and if you have too much paint, it's just going to, again, go on in a big glob. And if I want more paint to go down, I can press a little bit harder, but where I want it look, a lighter coverage, I can just tap very lightly. And there's still going to be plenty of paint there to do. And I'm just leaving that really dark edge there and trying to leave a little bit of the dark underneath where I think my scarf is going to go. Okay, getting a little bit more of that white. Put another layer of white just in that middle area there and around. Just kind of right in the middle here somewhere where just slightly to this side where the lights hitting it right here and the dispersing out from it okay so right here in the middle it should be almost pure white and then quickly kind of fading off to other so I'm going to just go ahead and go over that because I don't really know what's happening there yet. I don't want to have to paint around it later. So, all right, that looks good. See, now you can really see his form is taking shape. We're getting some really nice dimension on him. And then I can take a little bit of this white and put it out here on my snow too. And bring that part out a little bit. I'm not going to go in my my shadow area but just kind of along the sides a little bit there see cute 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 rapid fire rapid fire cute <clears throat> all right let's get 
I'm gonna go ahead and try this brush. Well, let me see. Let's go ahead and work on the hat. So I'm gonna get my my um, two round. This is Dakota from Princeton, but you can use really any. Actually, I might. I, I think I'm gonna use a softer, a softer one. This is the. 6100 series it'll be a little bit softer this has got a pretty stiff bristle to it i don't think i need that i want a little bit more control all right so let's make our teal green or our sage green i should say um i'm gonna make a decent amount of it because i want it for my um, buttons too so i'm gonna get a little bit on my palette knife here of the turquoise and then a little bit a little bit of yellow to make it kind of a little bit more green. I, I do want it to be sort of in that turquoise range, but then I'm going to grab some burnt sienna. A fairly good amount of burnt sienna there. And that'll neutralize it and make it a little bit more earthy toned, that brown in there, but it's still going to keep that teal color and then I'm going to use the unbleached titanium because it's got some yellow tones in it too. I'm going to leave a little bit of it of the darkest version of it there just in case. That's very teal so I want it to be a little bit more neutral. I think I'm going to grab a little bit of black. I don't tend to like to use black much when I'm mixing but sometimes it's just a quick shortcut to where you want to be. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, that's going to gray it out really nicely. Very good. Don't get caught up too much in having it be perfect. Sometimes you can mix and mix and mix and it dries out. So just get it close. If you are, you know, not fast at mixing, color mixing, and you're really not, that stresses you out, you can just buy, there's a lot of really beautiful pre-mixed colors that you can buy. You can get one that's, you know, similar to what you want and use that instead, especially if it's a color that you're going to use a lot. So, um, there's a lot of... Golden doesn't ha tend to have a lot of premixed colors. They're they're kind of they kind of tend to have like just the mass tone colors, the the single. Um, well, they have some mixed colors. I shouldn't say that. Like Indian yellow hue is a um, mixed color, I think. But um, but you're not going to have as many you know mixed colors as like. Um, some other brands where when I say mixed colors I'm talking about colors like you know Australian blue gum that has probably two or three it's got one two three you know three colors that make it uh, make it versus a color like ultramarine blue that has one color that makes it so um, that's what I would call a mixed color um, you've got these colors that um, like okay this one for instance here so that would be like a color that would be similar to what we're trying to mix here um, this is aqua green light and it's got uh, white and thalo green in it um, so that one's a pretty easy one it doesn't it's going to be fairly bright though so I would probably still add some brown to it um, so <clears throat> But this this looks really nice. It's got a nice, nice um, neutral undertone. Very pretty. That little bit of black helped gray it out nicely. So that's going to look really nice there with our snowman. And I left, again, just a little bit of this darker color because I'm going to need that for some of my shadows and things. All right. So let's scrape that off with my brush. Oops, I still had some turquoise on there. And let's spray that immediately so that it stays wet. 
if you don't spray it right away, it, it'll just dry really fast. Anytime you're spreading out your paint like that, it's going to dry faster. Okay. I really wish I'd left a little bit darker color there. I don't, it's not very dark, so probably going to have to mix up some dark, but this will do for now. All right, so I'm going to use my hat band with this green, and I sketched this guy out, the reference photo out on on uh, my iPad on Procreate. So I'm trying to do more of that, give myself some reference. Like, I found a reference photo originally, so if you're like, this doesn't look anything like what mm -hmm. Tuesday's video, you know, the one that, mm -hmm. the reference. But I've had... Um, another YouTube artist recently using my any of the reference photos that I've done not all but like a good dozen of them in the last year or so <clears throat> that are from like Pixabay and things. Yeah there's been um, a lot of overlap. There's a lot of overlap. Yeah. And so I'm just like I'm done doing I'm not yeah. gonna I don't want my I don't so play don't, that game. Yeah we don't want to step on anybody's toes and we want to no, we try work, we try yeah. very hard to make sure that we're not doing the same designs as mm -hmm. anybody else. And you, when you're using a site like Pixabay or one of those um, to get your reference photos, you're bound to have overlap. So right. yeah. I'm just trying to do a lot more original references. And if I can't find an original reference like this case, I'm just making my own by drawing it from what trying to design out. Boom. Done. And I'm going to get a little bit of black here and mix that in. I was trying to make a darker version of this, but it wasn't quite dark enough. I want it almost black over here. Well, I think I'm just going to have to let it set. Again, That's it's not dry enough for me to touch it yet. All right. I'm going to get some black, though, and kind of come up with the in the hat right here a little bit just to separate that out a little bit better. There we go. Okay. Cute, cute, cute. So let's draw in our... Let's, let's mix up our red... I'm going to get some of the magenta and some of the orange. About mm, two parts magenta to one part orange. That's going to make a really nice bright red. And you can use any red you want. So if you don't want this red, you don't have to. But you can, you know, use what, what you like. If you've got a red that you want to use, use that. I like mixing my own reds because, again, it's kind of like that gray that I like to mix with the Burnt Umber and the Ultramarine Blue because I can make it more um, more of a purpley red with adding more purp more magenta, and I can make it more of an orangey red by adding more orange. So Cadmium Red Light is another color that I would normally have used to mix my orange, but because we're doing the Carrot Nose, I wanted an orange for that. I just went ahead and did this. So I'm going to go ahead and, wow, these paints are just completely dry. They are. We need to run the humidifier if you can get it going. On, cause it's just these are drying way fast. Again, some burnt orange here and some of this cadmium orange and mixing those together to make a dark orange for a carrot. I mean, it's just all crumbly. I have barely even, I mean, I haven't used it at all, and it's just all crumbly. Not good. <laughs> Not at all. The humidify, the humidity in the room that you're painting in really does make a difference. And you can use a stay wet palette. I don't tend to like to use them because it kind of does alter the feel of the paints, but in some cases you almost need them. <laughs> so 
today is one of those days where I am having a lot of trouble with my paints drying on me very quickly. I know we've only been painting for an hour and they should not be like this. So I'm adding that water back in and just tapping over that puddle of paint, trying to kind of reconstitute it. It's not fully dry, so I should be able to get that water back into it, but it takes some time. There we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and roll that out. And let's go ahead and figure out where I want to put my carrot nose. So I need to leave room for my eyes. Let's go ahead and just dot those sort of where I want to put them. So I'm going to have them kind of a little bit of this halfway. So I'm just going to have them resting on the upper half somewhere in there. So my carrot nose can go down here and up. And I'm starting with the darker orange to do him. Do it. Cute. Right. the base of it here so that it's got that rounded look. I'm going to get some burnt sienna and quinacridone burnt orange and tap in along the bottom of it with some darker orange. This orange already has some of that quinacridone burnt orange in it. It's the cadmium orange with the quinacridone burnt orange there that I mixed together. So it's already got a little bit of that color in there. Let's get a little bit more of that black. I want to keep this color of green um, wet, so make sure you're spraying that. Don't let that dry out. I'm talking to myself now. Yeah, that this brush is not... cute. Okay. All right. Clean that out and go back to my softer brush here. Let's go ahead and put in the little mouth. So if I keep it tight, I can have kind of a... Let's, let's go over some expressions here that we can do. <clears throat> This is my Polish worksheet. I don't want to do it in a. I'll do it from here. Um, but I don't need to do it with paint. So we've got our snowman faces. We'll just do a couple of different ones. So we've got close together eyes with our nose. Let's go ahead and do our noses, kind of all the same, because that's kind of the easiest reference. All right, then we've got farther apart eyes, really small. We got bigger eyes farther apart. I tend to like having my eyes kind of close-ish, but not too close, so kind of just like right outside the border. And if you, you can also kind of do them, and I didn't do one this way, but do one. You can also do them where they're like kind of cockeyed, you know, which is kind of cute too. 
you know, so they're not like straight. All right, then you can do your mouth with like just a smirk and maybe, you know, something like that. You can do them. I've done them before where I've done a ton, ton of little ones. And bring them out like that. You can do them where they're the same size as your eyes and very equally spaced right up under the eyes. I like that. We can do kind of like what I think we're going to do here is kind of come out from the eyes and just do five. So not too many. Kind of a simple. And then um, one of the ones that I did, there was like stitches. So you can do the stitches where you're doing like that. I mean, I would work it out on paper, kind of draw a few, see what you like, and then go from there. So, but you can see how, you know, just by placing the eyes in different places and the mouth in different configurations, you can really get a different personality altogether on your snowman. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and scrape off all of this paint down here so I've got more room to work. This is all dry. a glass palette so if you've got a, a paper palette or whatever you can you know just get a fresh sheet don't scrape it don't scrape it all right don't try scraping it good point mm -hmm. all right so let's get some make these eyes look kind of like coal. I'm not trying to make them look like buttons. I'm going to kind of make them look like pieces of coal. So they're going to be a little bit more irregular shaped, not perfectly round. And I think I'm going to do my mouth a little bit smaller pieces than my eyes. So right now it looks like they're just kind of pasted on here. They're not like part of the body. So to do that, you need to get a little bit of the gray from the body, whatever gray it was. So I'm going to use that ultramarine blue and burnt umber here. And get a little bit of glaze. That just makes it transparent. Wipe most of it out here. And I'm going to go, remember our light's coming from this side, so I'm going to go this side of it and just tap in underneath and to one side. And this will, and I'm not really worried if I go over the top of that a little bit. I can always go back in and darken up that gray or that black later. But this is just to shadow the snow. Getting that black again and going back over, leaving that little bit of gray there. Okay. And then highlighting it will be the next important thing. So get a little bit of white, a little bit of the glaze, wipe out most of it, just like we did on our hat. We don't need a ton of paint on here. 
and that black may still be a little bit wet, so my black is just a little bit wet on me, so I'm having to tap a little bit to get this to come off, but... There we go. Give them a little sparkle in the eye. Let's take that carrot and give it a highlight. So I'm going to get my yellow, Indian yellow hue, and my orange and some white. There we go. Kind of make a dark orangey yellow and I'm gonna tap in the opposite direction so now that that yellow is dry so or that orange the first layer of orange should be dry so I can kind of do that and I'm not going right up against the edge again I'm kind of coming just inside get a little bit of the brighter orange and just do a little bit of the bright orange right underneath that to give it just in the thickest part of the carrot there. Round that out a little bit. Okay, there we go. A little bit lighter color, I think. Go a little bit brighter with that Carrots are kind of have those ridges, kind of a lines through them. Kind of, I don't know. I'm not. That's that's looking a little bit flat to me. Darker, darker orange. There you go. Okay, that's better. Okay, I'm just fiddling now. Let's go ahead and move on. <laughs> Get my red. Let's go ahead and put our flower on our hat. What? No, I'm good. Um. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to do a poinsettia. And I want the center to be kind of right in here. So right there. Now if you spritz too much, your paints become watery and my paint here is very watery. I need to mix up some more of this color that's not over there. And I'm going to make a little bit darker version of it, so I'm going to add a little bit of black here. Add a little bit of white just to make it more opaque because it's not one to cover the top of this black here. I'm going to put in my highlights on my petals. There we 
go. Okay, that's about all I'm going to do. I'm not going to do a ton with it. And then I'm going to use this orangey color for the center. couple of leaves so I'm going to get some of this green do a couple of leaves out there. okay let's go ahead and do our buttons round you can put them straight up and down you can do them kind of you know different like one's coming out where he's got a really round belly but I think I'm just going to do straight up and down there just about <clears throat> Again, right now they look like they're just pasted on, so we'll have to shadow um, under them, but I'm going to let them let them dry for now. And let's go ahead and put the, our arms on. Get some black and the burnt umber for that. All right, so... I'm wondering, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do this now. So I want them to be kind of, there's our scarf. So I want it to be just down from there, just kind of right, right above where that top button is somewhere. And I'm just going to kind of wiggle that line and get narrower as I go out and... Have nice narrow fingers for him. There. Okay. And then right here where he goes in, I'm going to kind of widen it out just a little bit and round out that, round it out so it looks like it's going down in. We'll also kind of shadow right there. Alright, so then our nest, I want to be right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of mark that. I want it to be just kind of right in line below the nose. So right in here. So I want to make sure my hands go, or my fingers go up above it. Come down. And then this one kind of goes out and cups underneath. be just about the same the same place there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, might do one that's kind of coming down this way. And this will be up behind it so we won't see the the whole thing. I'm going to get a little bit of black and just darken up the center of the nest there and then we'll put in some more some more stuff to it I might put the lady cardinal over here have the male over here I don't know I still that's still wet so I need to wait on that so let's go ahead and draw in our cardinal guy so say that uh, well yeah 
maybe. So he's going to stand right here. I'm just realizing he's going to be kind of in this shadow area. I'm wondering if I want it a little bit lighter, but I'll go ahead and worry about that later. So his body, tail is coming up, making a U shape kind of almost. And then you're going to have the wing coming back from the back of the body. So wherever that is, just kind of make a line back and then fill that back in. And then the head comes out and the lighter color here. This should be dry enough to go ahead and do a second coat now. Sometimes if you put fresh paint down, it'll kind of activate it. Just wait a second. Just really mostly worried about that wing there. Okay. He's a good shape, but once I looked at it overall, I kind of want him a little bit bigger. I want his head to be up here. shape right for him to be bigger. Okay, that looks good. Let's get some of this dark orange for his beak. It's going to come out from the face. Like a little diamond shape. doesn't dry and I don't want it to dry it dries yeah. all right I'm gonna get some burnt orange with the unbleached titanium here I'm just gonna kind of make some little nest You can get some of that burnt umber and mix that in. Do some of that. A little bit darker. Okay, and then 
and get some just the unbleached titanium. Those will really show up, so I'll just do a few of those. Okay. A brush in your water there. Huh? A brush in your water there for a while. Okay. Thank you. It's the fans. They're giving me all these. Thank cues. you. All right. because the paint is still wet underneath there, but just darkening up that area a little bit where the eggs are going to go. Okay, it's still not dry, but I'm just going to go for it. Hope for the best. I'm going to get some of that gray that I used there and darken up underneath the buttons to this side. part of the snowman. Do the arms same way. Okay, looks good. We need to do the carrot. I forgot to do it. Okay, much better. All right, let's do a little bit of the snow under our bird. standing just a little little dark spot where he's standing we don't have his legs on obviously yet but they'll be there let's go ahead and get some black and some of this darker red here from the poinsettia and I'm going to use that to go on the wings so I'm going to go up underneath and just kind of do some light lines there and a little bit underneath the bottom of the body and a little bit on the back side of the tail and a little bit on the back side of the head okay and then I'm going to get some of the brighter red and come this way with it opposite direction Brighten that up a little bit. Get the black. Go ahead and zoom in because I'm not going to be able to see what's going on here if I don't. I've thinned out my paint so I can work with it and have a small enough brush that I can get some detail here. I need to make a mask around my bird so I'm going to dot for the eye and have in front for there and just underneath and below the beak that mask that he's got and it's kind of squared off at the bottom okay and then for the feet I'm gonna go back right um, right like where the tail comes down the lowest part back here that's kind of where I'm gonna go with the feet and then angle them forward Something like that. They're probably a little bit big, but I can fix them later. All right, then I need some white. zoomed out. Because you're off screen. Okay. Okay. Gonna go around the eye with a little bit of white. This is gonna be tricky because it's small. Just a little dot on top for the little beak or the little 
highlight in the eye, and then I'm going to get a little bit of this orange to highlight the top of the beak. Okay. And then I'm going to get some of the darker orange, a little bit of burnt orange, maybe a little bit of the black, and just kind of try to make a line for the... Hey, you can't do a whole lot of detail here. It's so tiny, so just do the best you can. But there we go. I kind of made his beak a little bit pointy for a cardinal. They're not that pointy. I'm going to get some of this orangey red and bring it into my brighter red. Use it on his beak breast there. Just a little highlight on the breast. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead and put our eggs in the nest. I'm going to use the same green as the hat. I'm just going to use this brush as width and just plop them down. I don't know why I did them so off center. Maybe we maybe we need more. I'm going to do that again. Move them to the middle. Pick it lifted that brown. There we go. I'm going to need something over here. I'm not really sure what yet. Well, I guess we'll have our scarf over here, so that'll probably make a difference. I'm going to get some of this color that we used on our nest and highlight the limbs. Just dab, dab it on there. Dry brush some highlight on those. How's everybody doing? Did we have anybody show up on a Saturday? It's been a no. while. It's no. been a while. No, it's just been the two of us. Just the two of us yeah. this whole time? Just okay. the two of us. That'd be all right. Make it a little awkward, but it's all right. <laughs> now, we got our our core We're fans with crew. us here. Yeah. Found us. Good. I was not feeling well on Tuesday. So. <laughs> that was not good. Tried a new restaurant for us. It's been around for a while, but it was Greek. And apparently I can't do Greek. <laughs> 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 apparently my stomach was like, no, no, just no. Everything's out. Nope. We're just not doing it today. Can't even. <laughs> it's like not not fun. All right, gonna get some lighter version of this teal color here. Let's work on our buttons. So our buttons are gonna have our highlight around the rim, and I'm gonna leave a little bit of that dark.
just get black and add it to this green. Really dark. Dots. Our button holes. And if you want to do thread, you can do thread. I think I'm going to leave the thread out this time. do want a little bit of the lighter color kind of in the middle of the button so you can kind of do it sort of towards this back side here. green again not too much on my brush just gonna I don't know why I went above the line there I don't know really what I wanted to do there we go and then I'm gonna use a bit of this lighter color on my leaf that was pretty light come the opposite direction center line out, out the leaves all right he looks like a bobblehead right now the way his the shadow is happening because of that scarf <laughs> he kind of looks like his head's jutting forward we'll fix it but it's just kind of funny right now looks a little funky bigger brush here. This is the four filbert and get some of my red here. I don't have any left so I'm going to mix up some more orange and magenta here to make my red. I'm going to add a little bit of the burnt orange to it too to give it a burnt undertone, burnt orange undertone. 
You see how much it's globbed on my brush here, so I need to add water so it <laughs> is not clumpy. I can't paint that way. Okay, so this is going to go, this one's going to go this way, it's going to go underneath, and then wrap around above, come back down, like that, and then this one goes up underneath. Okay, and then I'm just going to use the end here and just do my little fringe. Get some black with that red color. Darken up underneath where that knot is happening there. some random darkish lines here. Okay, looks good. Get some white, add that to this red. to create some fuzzies. I'm not going to go too detailed with this. Sometimes I've, you know, I'd go in and like, you know, with a detail brush and kind of really mark out the lines and all, but I think today I'm just going to kind of dab it on, keep it a little bit more floofy, 
like chenille, you know, where it would not really show the individual patterns. Just a little more fuzzy. And kind of messing up the outer border of the lines here to make them look a little fuzzy too. Looks a little stiff there. I'm not really liking the scarf the way it's laying, but not much I can do about it at this point. Unless I redo the whole thing, so I'm not going to do that. Get a little bit of a darker color. I put my buttons down low so I didn't put my my stippling up high enough there. I think I left more room for the scarf than I thought I was going to use. should have waited on the buttons until I got the scarf in there because they they look really low to me I probably could fit another one in there and I might just do that actually because that's that's the only way to really fix it let's just put another button in here and we've got an uneven number but or we've got an even number, I should say. Or you could just leave it and it can be like a New York snowman with this shirt buttoned down. It's put, true. Put a gold chain on there. <laughs> Forget about it. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Here, keep this for you. <laughs> you, you look cute. such a creature of habit he knows our schedule so well it's throwing him off mm -hmm. it's like this is not our day to be in here I don't know why we're all in the studio today <coughs> I'm just darkening that up a little bit there <coughs> let's get some of that light highlight Was tricky when you have to add something up. Oh, Fitzy. How you doing, puppy? You doing good? You being a good boy? He's like, why is dad filming me? <laughs> I don't like this. I had not <laughs> I did not consent to my image being Be used. used. I'm having a bad hair day. Oh, 
Well, yeah, I didn't just say this. We, this is our first time back from after Thanksgiving, so I hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving. We had a house full. It was great. Not everybody. We went and visited our oldest because they had just had it. Just had a newborn, and we've got we had two newborns. <laughs> this one's a month older. Amelia was just you know she, she was the old lady of the two. She knew. <laughs> She was definitely working it. Oh my gosh, so stinking cute. Talking. Well, quote unquote talking. So cute. Mm. She's what? A month old now? Two months old? No, two months old. Cause Nathan Amelia's is. two months old, yeah. Noah's one. Noah's one month old. Which just doesn't seem like, I mean, I don't know. Time flies. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to put some brighter yellow little bits in my flower center here. Get some yellow, Indian yellow hue and white. Just a little bit of this on my carrot. I still feel like it's not quite highlighted. There we go. All right. Oops. That's how I have paint all over this thing because I keep blindly. I'm looking down while I'm not paying attention to where I'm putting my hand. This whole thing is covered with paint. Mm -hmm. some black here just just very very lightly adding some shadow there I do like the kind of fluffiness that's happening in the scarf so I don't think I'm going to do much more to it I'm going to get a little bit of more white and do a little bit on this side and right up in here where it's first coming down over the just like right at the top of it yeah that's better kind of, you know, if you've got any areas where it looks like solid light color, then you can go back in and add some dark to separate it. That's what I did over here because I kind of got my lights too close together there and it was looking kind of funky. Let's highlight some of these. on the end of these. That look cute? I don't know. I can't tell anymore. I don't know. 
now. A little bit of highlight on the breast, a little bit of highlight on the top there, a little bit of highlight on the top of the wing, a little bit right there. just slightly more, get a little bit of this yellow, some white, a little bit of unbleached titanium. Just on the parts that are sticking out the most. There. Did you do the shadow for the uh, cardinal? Did a little bit of one. Do I need another bigger one? I don't know. I did. Okay. There's a, there's one. Good job. Thanks. Were you asking for a friend? Yes. <laughs> of a female cardinal. Can you give me a picture of a female cardinal where she may be like looking down or kind of to the side sitting on a branch? Let's go ahead and splatter while we're waiting for that because I, th I think I do want to add a female over here on this side. I think there's room for one right here up high. I'm going to use the zinc white to splatter my snow. It'll go on a little bit more transparently. So while you're doing that, I'll just remind everybody that below this video are the links to Amazon and Brush Guys and Blick, and you got lists in there for like brushes and things like that. Mm -hmm. So if anybody needs to send Christmas ideas to anybody, yeah, you know, buy through the links, support the channel. That does help us a lot. Save some money with the brush. But it's uh, some things save money, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. With the brush guys, I mean, the the cost yeah. of those brushes are pretty cheap, and then you add in the code. True. Angela Fine Art get five more percent off. True. You got a stocking full of brushes. I like it. All right, so I'm gonna do the cardinal, female cardinal tail here, neck here, her legs coming out here. body. I just added the burnt sienna to the really need kind of more brown I think. Her wings come out here. I'm trying to make sure she's the same size-ish 
too. I'm making her a little bit bigger than she needs to be. I like that though. I think we needed her. Getting some red, add to her wing. And then she has the little head thing coming up too. apparently <laughs> we keep getting asked at restaurants if we're together if we need one separate checks I'm like I don't know we hit about 50 we started getting asked that my theory is that the waitresses aren't used to seeing a 50 year old man with a 50 year old woman <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, there's something wrong here. He should be with a 20, 20 year old, right? <laughs> no, joking. Sorry. Oh, you look 20. Don't mean to. <laughs> not, not man bashing, just saying. I can't really figure out. <clears throat> <clears throat> Yeah, not that I'm sore about it or anything. <laughs> it's just that I look so young, and they're like, oh, wow. Right. She's robbing the cradle there. That's right. Yeah, they think I'm a cougar. Wow. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> I'm a cat man. You and your gray beard. <laughs> All right, little beak, cute. Could probably zoom in on her. Hopefully, there we go. All right, so her eyes back here, and then around the beak, she's got some dark. Not as dark as him, but she does have some dark. I need to make her see how she's kind of just blending into the background. Can't really see her, so I need to make her more visible. So I'm going to have to make her darker so that I can see her. So I'm going to get a little bit of burnt umber and just add it to this red and make her a little bit more bold. Yeah, that's better because that color was just blending right into that background. I wasn't getting any. I'm going to actually add a little bit of yellow to it to get. She's got a little bit of a golden tone in the picture I'm looking at. right that's about right I was thinking this would be about a two hour one so we're about there just about there get some brighter yellow or brighter reds there to use on the wings on the crest gonna tap in around the beak there to Blend it in and then get some of that yellow for maybe a little bit of the orange for the top of the beak. Highlight. Get a little 
little bit of the darker color to put a little crease there. Make sure that beak goes down into the face. It doesn't set on the edge of the face. So she's pretty close. Let's go ahead and give her like a couple pops of brighter red in the wings. They do have just a little bit of the brighter red. So right in here. A little bit on the top of the head and in the tail. And then let's Get some of that unbleached titanium with this base color that we were using, which was just kind of the burnt burnt sienna added to the red. I'm gonna add it to the back here. Give her a little highlight there, a little highlight there, a little highlight around the eye. And on the tail. Alright. And then let's give her a little little tiny highlight in the eye with the white. And you can use a smaller brush for this. This brush is like overkill. But if I get it kind of in the right spot, I can do it. There we go. Little tiny dot in the eye there. Zoom back out there, honey, and we'll see what we've got. Yeah, that's nice. So now we got a couple. She might need a little, little chubbier belly. She seems a little skinny to me for being winter. Usually they get a little more floofed out in the winter. And of course they wouldn't have eggs, but you know, we're just making artistic license here because we want to have eggs, so the snowman's keeping the eggs warm. <laughs> Magically. Right. Yeah, that's fun. Fun, fun, fun. We got some good splatters on there for our snow. Might do some more sm uh, Do we, should we do some snowflakes? Probably. Does she have feet? What? Oh, she doesn't have feet. Thank you. I always forget the feet. Oh, dang it! I've been doing so good with that too. <laughs> Shoot! Now back to zero. <laughs> Gotta start over. It's been zero days. It's been zero days since I didn't put any feet yeah. on the bird. I gotta change the sign. Oh, yeah. Shoot. It's, it's been a good couple of years since I've done that. Okay. So the feet are attached. Oh, come on. Your phone. Your phone. <laughs> Again. You need to have. It locks pretty quickly. Longer lock time. <laughs> no. No, I don't. Why? Why would I? Mm -mm. I mean, if I leave it out on my desk, it'll work and stuff like that. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, if the waitresses heard, heard us talking like this, they know we were married. Yeah. <laughs> we get along too well. Is that what you're saying? When we're at the restaurants, we're on our best behavior. We're, no, we're, we're just arguing about lock times on phones. <laughs> <laughs> the hard hitting issues. She she did say that she the waitress because we she must have heard us. 
<laughs> or look. We must have gotten a look on her face because I, I, I did like a little hand gesture, like yes, we got asked. <laughs> and I think she saw me do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because we've been anymore. We were just like, what it, you know, what are they going to ask? And uh, yeah, she said that that a lot of married couples do ask for separate checks, so weirdly enough. So, I don't know. all right, that is. I think I'm going to put a little bit more snow down at the feet of this guy just that he's kind of churned up some snow. For once, I put too much white. I don't know why. But... Just kind of right in front of that shadow so it'll set it off a little bit more. There we go. Super cute. Hope you guys liked it. Oh, oh I didn't do the... I do want to do at least one snowflake. I'm going to do a snowflake. I like the snowflakes. I think they add something to it. Plus, we've got all this white over here we need to use. You can have your phone back. Thanks. Which trip is So, one line and then an X through that line. So, you Like that. Now let's see where we're going to put these. Do one here and one. Again, I've wet down my paint so that it's nice and thin. Just making different patterns here. No right or wrong way of doing these. There's all kinds of different things you can do with these. Lots of fun different patterns you can make. So you feel like I'm touching. I am touching wet paint. Okay. My 
brush is not making good lines for me. Just think the paint was getting kind of globbed in there. There we go. Much better. one up so it's the same brightness as the other one. Do, I think I'm gonna do five because I feel like it's it's not feeling balanced to me, so I'm gonna put one up here. Looking at the placement here too and making sure that I don't have these two like right at the same level. It'll help. Maybe making them a different size too. Lots of fun little snowflake shapes. All right, there we go. We're done. Now it feels more complete. I mean, I could put one here too, but he wouldn't show up as well, so I think we're gonna call that good. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching with us today. Oh, we got some super chat. Yeah. Nice. It's always awesome. Been patiently waiting. Nice. Super chat. Super chat. So, we had several super chats today. Oh. And thank you to Celtic Peasant. There was no special message, but thank you very much for that. Celtic Peasants. Peasant. I like it. And cool then... Thank you, Celtic. <laughs> We had one from Maggie. Oh. Says, thank you so much. Looking forward to the tiger, tiger painting. painting. Ooh, that's next Saturday, yes. Yeah, that's the... We're going to do white tiger for our bonus video for our patrons for the $5 level and up. So, thank you, Maggie. Yes. And then we have one... From Linda. Oh. And Linda says... Oh. It was April character. character. With the pink hat <laughs> flips it backward and raises his thumb up in the air. Nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Oh, thank you, Linda. And then we had um, turn that one off. Oh, I think I just deleted the other one on accident. 
Okay, so uh, the the other one was from Pat, and Pat says, Angela, your attention to detail really makes your tutorial special. Oh, thank you, Pat. This is a super cute one. Thank you for all you do. And Mark. Oh. <laughs> and Mark, too. So thank, thank you that. to Pat. That's awesome. And to Maggie. And the to Celtic, Celtic Peasant. Peasant. I want to make sure I got all of them. Yeah. Which I thank believe you guys. I did. Wow. That's really sweet. Okay. And then we had a couple questions. Okay. Uh, so the first question was What is the difference between painting an open back canvas versus a canvas board? Do you recommend one over the other? Um, okay. Well, Stephen, um, it depends on the kind of painting you're doing sometimes. So if I'm doing a palette knife painting where I know I'm going to put a lot of pressure on the canvas and be like, you know, really putting on the paint thick, I want, I don't want this kind of a canvas because it's got too much give. Although this one is pretty tightly woven. Um, this one's a Blick canvas. Uh, I ran out of the Fredericks in this size. They just sent me some new ones, but I'm using up these ones because I ended up buying some um, from Blick. But um, I'm going to shadow this while I'm talking to you, so go ahead and take that off of there. Um, so, it, but yeah, for it, it really depends too on how you like to frame your canvases because if you're going to be framing them with an open back frame, um, a lot of times the canvas panels uh, work a little bit better for that. Um, they're a little bit easier to frame. Um, at a frame shop, they will that they'll you'd you'd have to have it at a frame shop. I'm using burnt umber here, by the way, um, to darken up that little corner there. Just feel like it kind of melted into the background. Didn't have any separation there too much. Um, so the question was about the can kind of canvas. What kind of canvas? Um, start going. Go back. And I I want to make sure I'm answering the specific specifics of his question. So the question is, uh, what is the difference difference between painting on an open back canvas okay. versus a canvas board? Okay. And do you recommend one over the other? Okay. So, so what is the difference? So basically it's just, it's just, you're going to have a little bit more wiggling with one of these. Um, it does dry differently too. So the, the, um, the, open back canvases will dry a little bit faster I find than the um, canvas boards um, and I think that's just because there's no air you know coming out from the back of it it's not evaporating out the back the board is kind of trapping the moisture um, a little bit uh, so that's you know it does have a different feel. That these are a little bit more. Uh, I don't want to say wobbly, but a little bit more. Um, you know, just a little bit more flex in it. So, if that bothers you, then the canvas boards can I find a little bit easier sometimes for people because they're not going to have to worry, especially if you're putting it on an easel. The easel seems tends to like. Um, make that resonance even more ob obvious, you know, um, cause the, cause the easel will move too. <laughs> so if you've got an open back canvas on an easel, you're going to get a lot more flexing than if you have a, um, canvas panel, um, which is going to give you just about zero flex. So, okay. yeah. We got another question. Okay. Mark, please, if Angela has time, choose only one yellow. What would it be? Uh, cadmium yellow light. 100%. You can go lighter. You can't, you can't go lighter. You can go darker pretty easily. But if you want that super bright yellow, you got to start with the super bright yellow. Um, just adding white is not going to cut it. So um, get, having that cadmium yellow light is going to be 
Um, cadmium yellow prim, primrose is even lighter than that. Um, but the cadmium yellow light is a little bit more saturated. So it's like really got a good yellow base. You add a tiny bit of orange or a tiny bit of red to it. It's going to be, you know, much more deep like the Indian yellow hue. So it'll go golden really easily. It'll go deeper really easily. But again, you can't make it brighter um, starting with the cadmium yellow medium or something like that. We got fairly close to that original drawing. I'm pretty impressed with with that. We uh, the my um, yeah, my, I, I did awesome. That's for sure. No, I'm saying my um, procreate skills are coming up in the world. I'm really happy with that because that's been one of my goals this year. So I, I'm at the end of the year and I'm finally mm -hmm. <laughs> able to do that. <laughs> Uh, I like it almost as much as I like the painted version, so that's nice. <laughs> that's it's a nice feeling. I do feel like I should have gone a little bit darker. I do like the darker background on that one a little bit better than what I did here, but it, I'm not, you know, I don't hate it, so it's good. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much again. Um, super uh, appreciative of everybody, all of our patrons and every, all of our supporters. We are doing something new on our channel. We are, I've hired a um, video videographer, um, Ben. He is actually a longtime friend. It's funny, all the people that I've hired are friends of my, my, my friends, or sons, sons or daughters of my friends. But um, anyhow, he is uh, going to be doing time lapse for us. He's done two already. They're awesome. He's been doing my shorts and reels and things um, for my channel for a couple of, for about a year now. Um, and so now we're doing time lapse. So fingers crossed since they changed the new uh, way that YouTube lists our videos, um, our live streams now go into lives. They're no longer in the video uploads section or the, you know, used to be you could go to the videos tab on my channel. If you click on my name and go to my channel after this, you can see what I'm talking about. But at the top, there'll be like a little thing that says uh, videos and then it'll say shorts and then it'll say live. And so all of our videos are done live. Uh, except for like maybe, you know, the occasional video in the last couple of years will be over in the upload in the video section. Now the new video section, um, does not contain our live streams anymore. So people have been like going there and looking for our new videos and saying, where, you know, are you not doing videos anymore? So it's been very frustrating. Um, I don't like that change at all. But I don't get to, uh, you know, I, I don't get a say. So um, we're going to be doing up, uploads. So we're we, he's he's done two now um, for the last two videos. He'll do one for this one. Um, so if you could really help us out, because YouTube does not even share our uploads at all. They don't even know that we do uploads. We haven't done uploads. So their algorithm is not, we're not on their, their algorithm uh, radar at all for uploading videos, which is so weird. But anyhow, I've been, you know, on YouTube for 10 years and they're not sharing my uploads. <laughs> so little, little frustration there. But um, if you could um, look for those and watch them, that would be a huge boost. Um, share them on your social media, like them, um, uh, and leave a comment even if you have time. That would be awesome because that will help uh, generate interest in those uploads. I'm hoping that the uploads will reach a new audience that don't want to watch these longer versions of the videos. Um, and we can kind of branch out a little bit. And it'll also help when people are coming to our channel trying to discover what we're doing and go to the videos tab. And now there'll be something there for them to see. And they'll see that, oh, wait, that's a longer version. And then they can click over to see the longer version if they want to. So that was a long story just to say, please, please uh, go to our channel channel, check out our uploads that we've got there and look for the new uploads that'll be happening every week after these live stream videos. It'll really, really, really help us. I want to get those uploads started to share. They're not getting shared at all by YouTube's algorithm right now. So they're really, really low views on them. And uh, we're hoping to get those back up to at least what our live stream ones are or more. I feel like they should probably be getting even more because I think more people want to watch the shorter videos than, than the long ones in the, you know, usually the, 
I'm just rambling now. I'm going to stop. Mark's just not even commenting. He's just, like, not even. Okay. All right. (laughs) I've said enough. That's it. Thank you guys so much. (laughs) We'll see you next week. We'll be painting a little dog in a stocking. I promise it'll be cuter than the reference photo. I'll probably sketch him out a little bit this week, too, maybe, if I have some time. Um, But I'm going to be adding things to the stocking and making it look full. It looks pretty flat right now and um, trying to make it look a little cuter. So hopefully that'll be fun for you and we can join us on Tuesday for that. And uh, yeah, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.